Resolves of Maria Teresa Mirabal for 1946. I resolve not to scare Nelson with scary stories. I resolve to be diligent with my tasks and not fall asleep when I say my prayers. I resolve not to think of clothes when I am in church. I resolve to be chaste, as that is a noble thing to do. I resolve not to be so tender-hearted, as even Minerva says crying will bring on prematuring wrinkles. I think that's enough resolves for a regular year. I see the picture of our president with eyes that followed me around the room, and I'm thinking he's trying to catch me doing something wrong. Before, I've always thought our president was like God, watching over everything I did. I'm not saying I don't love our president, because I do. It's like if I were to find out Papa did something wrong, I would still love him, wouldn't I? Maria Teresa's adolescence, inexperience, and naive nature as a child limit her goals to very minute achievements, such as not thinking of clothes in church and not falling asleep during prayers. However, when Minerva informs Mate that she had been getting involved in the revolution in order for Mate to grow up in a free country, the pressures of growing up suddenly cause change. Mate begins to toy with ideas of the president watching her and whether or not she should like the president, issues that obviously require a substantial amount of maturity and understanding to reflect on. As Mate questions whether she would love the president even if he did anything wrong, she provides a piece of foreshadowing of her future self. Although chapter 3 may seem irrelevant to the book, it is one of the most important in Mate's hero's journey, emphasizing through contrast how much she had changed in such a short life. We are all trying. The day is rainy. A breeze keeps blowing through the cacao. Phyllis says that the day is calling us. It makes me shiver to hear her say that after the dream I had last night. I'm running around the house trying to find my wedding dress when I hear Mama call to look in Papa's coffin. The car horn is blowing, so I go ahead and raise the lid. Inside is a beautiful satin gown in pieces. I lift out that one arm, and then another arm, then the bodice, and more parts below. I'm frantic, thinking we will have to sew this thing together. When I get to the bottom, there's Papa smiling up at me. I drop all those pieces like they're contaminated and wake up the whole house with my screams. Manolo and Minerva have explained everything. A national underground is forming. Everyone and everything has a codename. I told Minerva and Manolo right out. I wanted to join. I don't want to be babied anymore. I want to be worthy of Palomino. Maria Teresa develops her character when she tells us about her nightmare regarding Papa and his casket. She explained this, that this is a recurring dream that ends with Papa menacing smiling up at her at the end. She tells us on page 119 when she says, I'm running around the house trying to find my wedding dress when I hear Mama call out to look in Papa's coffin. Inside is a beautiful satin gown. When I get to the bottom, there's Papa smiling up at me. One main cause of the nightmare is the worry that Maria Teresa has that because Papa cheated on Mama, that she will also get cheated on. Maria Teresa shows significant character growth when she joins the revolution against Trujillo. The major impacts of this action is Maria showing her loyalty and motivation to make a change at the Dominican. She explained this when on page 142 she says, I told Minerva and Manuela right out, I wanted to join. I could feel my breath coming short with the excitement of it all. Magdalena and I had a long talk about the real connection between our people. Is it our religion? The color of our skin? The money in our pockets? We were discussing away, and all of a sudden, the girls started congregating one by one, including the two new ones who have replaced Miriam and Dulce, everybody contributing their ideas. And it wasn't just the usual, Sina and Asela and Violetta and Dahlia, the educated women, talking. Even Balbina knew there was something was up and came and sat right in front of me so she could watch my mouth. I spoke real slow for her to understand what we were talking about. Love. Love among us women. There's something deeper. Something I really feel in in here. Especially late at night. A current going among us. Like an invisible needle stitching us together into the glorious free nation we are becoming. Minerva and Sina have been talking strategy to me since the news was announced this morning. It's as final as anything can be around here. The OAS Peace Committee comes this Friday. Only one prisoner from each pavilion will be interviewed. The head guards were given the choice, and they picked me. Minerva says it's because they don't think I'll complain. And you have to, she says. You have to, mate. But they haven't done anything at protest. They're victims, too, like you say. 
but victims can do a lot of harm. And this isn't personal, mate, she adds. This is principle. I was never good at understanding that difference so crucial to my sister. Everything's personal to me that's principal to her, it seems. Hey, mate, promise me, she says. Looking in my eyes, please promise me. So I say to her the only thing I can say. I promise you this. I'll be true to what I think is right. I never has never heard such talk from me. Fair enough, she says. Fair enough. Just through the words, I promise you this, I'll be true to what I think is right, Maria Teresa has become a prominent demonstrative revolutionary as she talks strategy instead of getting advice. Fifteen years in between her first diary in 1960, this is an explicative definition of her advance and maturity. Mate then goes on to say, Minerva had never heard such talk from me. Her continued expressment of all that Minerva has done comes to a breaking point as she truly believes in her own beliefs and actions to provide well means for herself for the prison mates and the revolution, without the need of approval or contentment from her sister. Maria Teresa continues to express maturely positive aspects of her life, and I believe an important moment in her hero's journey occurs on Friday, April 8th, after 78 days in prison. By addressing differences in society and reflecting deeper into the connection between people, Mate notes she feels the aura and explains it as occurring going among us. This is very important because she has reached a crucial point, and it's that of maturity and growing in wisdom.